only two releases in and the Gundam Seed Freedom line has proven itself to be one of the greatest high-grade Gundam lines of all time. Starting off with the absolutely fantastic high-grade Rising Freedom Gundam, the second release we've got right here is the high-grade Immortal Justice. Now this is also a platinum tier kit, but for a different paradigm of reasons. The biggest issue we would have seen with the Rising Freedom was that mass amount of stickers. This isn't present here, so this is a much more color accurate kit out of the box, but it does bring along a couple of its own issues and downfalls compared to the Rising Freedom itself. But first, I'm going to talk about the good, then the bad last. Aesthetically, this looks fantastic. When it comes to the Athran Zala suits, the style is always there. They're ridiculously cool looking. The colors are very unique among Gunpla. And we've got some spiky bits merged with some beautiful curves. And these are some of the nicest arms I've ever seen on a high grade kit, really adding to an almost organic mecha aspect. When it comes to the accessories in here, this is rocking the full loadout of sword, board and beam rifle with some nice changes to it. The beam rifle we've seen before with the freedom, the shield is similar but a little bit different. But what really makes this unique is those killer beam boomerang beam sabers which look ridiculously cool and some nice shin kicking beam effects. Articulation wise once again this is absolutely phenomenal it won't pull off all the most dynamic poses that you want. This is also a kit that has a transformation to mobile armor mode. The transformation is very simple it doesn't flow as well as we would have seen with the high grade rising freedom and it does have some aesthetic aspects that could look a little bit better. Now winding back a little bit to what I said earlier on that this does have a couple of negative aspects. None of them are any deal breakers. For example, some parts don't look great like the nose section on the mobile armor mode and some parts do fall off every now and then, all of which very easy to fix. So almost completely non-issues. Overall, a platinum tier fantastic high grade that once again, just like the freedom is unmissable. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at another high grade Gundam Seed Freedom Kit and this right here is the high grade Immortal Justice Gundam. Got this through Hobby Link Japan, you can too. Link in the description. Now here we go. So first off as usual we're going to be winding back towards the build and this is extremely similar as you'd expect to the high grade Rising Freedom Gundam. So that does mean it is an incredible build and it will be fully compatible with that Rising Gundam. Inside of all of these kits at their core what we have is referred to as the Seed Action System which is basically a whole bunch of extremely nice joints to make sure that these pose as close to the over the top seed poses you see in the movie as possible. So this builds up exactly the same way we've seen with the Rising Gundam. That means there is no inner frame like we would have seen in some of the Witch from Mercury kits. The level of detail may not be as high when it comes to detail, but a lot is put into the various points of articulation. Now, even though this is similar to the Rising Freedom in a lot of ways, there's no real parts carried over from it. Some of them do feel very similar, like a lot of the joints, but overall, it's a very different build. The plastics, of course, are a completely different color. We do have some unique aspects here and there. For example, the arms on this actually have an extra bit of articulation at the wrist, and that, combined with the very curvy nature of the armor, gives you some organic nice poses when you finally do get this posing. I would almost say that this is a little bit of a simpler build compared to the Rising Freedom. We don't have the tiny little bit in the V-fin. There's a small bit, but it's easier to attach, a little bit more old school. We do sadly have to use stickers for the eyes, but they are the right color inside if you wanted to light pipe some light through the eyes. But when it comes to the various Justice Gundams, they've green eyes and blue head cameras, which the inner clear plastic doesn't represent. Also, in a little bit of a comparison to the Rising Freedom Gundam, we don't have as many stickers in here, and none of these are really all that critical, so I did use every single one of them in the build, and I'll talk about those a little bit more in the actual aesthetics, but they're not as big of an issue whatsoever. However, I will mention it's not necessarily all good news. The pink on this marks quite obviously, and it's very easy to get marks all over it, and cleaning up non-white plastic is... Well, it's a little bit more difficult. If you use a sanding stick or sandpaper or a file, you can mark it and it'll be extremely, extremely obvious. Now, in order to bypass this, what I did is I got a bunch of sanding sticks. These are from DSPIAE. Display, is it? I just went from 800 grit, 600 grit to 1200 grit. You still kind of end up with a scratched up surface. So I used the balancer by Gun Primer to buff out the scratches and in the end it will look perfect. So if you want this to look absolutely perfect, even just a really good nipper is not going to do the job. This takes some extra cleanup. So do be warned, 
Overall though it is a fantastic build, it feels great, putting it together is just so much fun and overall in the end what you get is one exquisite looking fantastic Athron Gundam. Now let's jump right on into the aesthetics. So jumping right on into the aesthetics and I don't even know where to start here now I thought this would be just as good as the Rising Freedom and it is definitely but there's some aspects about this that are just how can you say just much more unique being an Athron Zalas suit it's got a very unique color scheme and a lot of unique aspects like when it comes to Unicorn Gundam it's almost like the Justice Gundams are as unicorn as the unicorns are when it comes to the horn up there on top. This time around we don't actually have any kind of camera up there so it's just in white. We've got that with the standard yellow v-fin. We've got one hell of a kick arse face on this just like we would have seen on the Rising Freedom. These are such nicely designed heads on very nicely designed Gundams. Definitely one thing that stands out straight away to me are the arms like i mentioned these are extremely curvy we've got the extra wrist joint in there to really bring the hands in and that well jumping ahead a little bit is the one disappointment in here we have no alternate hands whatsoever so we can't get some nice fluid poses it's always those block hands besides that though amazing the legs the way they build up is spectacular lots of parts from the side front this color separation is off the charts those pointy feet mecha high heels this is the whole package and the wings on this i dare say almost look better than ever not sure about that thing in the middle though so now jumping into the full 360 spin so you can see every angle and every aspect of this for yourself in case i forget to mention something about it the color separation is fantastic the colors on here are very very nice as well and one thing that really shocks me about this kit it was definitely in the rising freedom but it feels a little bit more here is just how naturally it falls into poses and how organic it looks i know it is a robot but it just kind of feels almost a little more humanoid or human than we usually would with these giant mechas in small scale. Even across the seed line, which has tons and tons of unique takes on the Gundam, Atheron's suits always tend to be the most unique. Again, the color scheme, that big old unicorn horn on top, all the spiky bits, and the beautiful curves. This is a super beautiful Gundam. Just like we would have seen with the Rising Freedom, no matter what light you've got this in, it looks great. It catches the light in all the right ways. The lights and the shadows fall on the kit so well. It's got a ridiculously nice, I suppose it's weird to say, but handsomely designed face that just looks good in every shot. It's one awesome Gundam through and through. Aesthetically, this is fantastic. So now it's about time to jump in a little bit closer to check out those individual kind of model kit bits, the details, all of that stuff. And I'm going to mention while I'm putting them back into the pose well into a kind of more standard pose that this does have a couple of bits that likes to fall off that we didn't really see on the rising freedom now the side skirts i don't know why they designed them the way that they did but they've got this little bit of a cut out up top but they've got this little bit of a cut out up top so it doesn't fully go around the ball that means they're quite likely to fall off at times but more so occasionally not really all of the time the one thing that gets me all of the time is the Gundam gun dick down here that it just I guess it's just the good old law of the lever again if you just push down on this at all it's gonna pop off so that does pop off a lot be careful it's a little bit of a loss risk because you know it comes off so easily but let's check out some of the actual model kit aspects so first off color separation wise this is slightly better again up in the head than we saw in the rising Gundam or rising freedom because the Vulcans or the whatever they call IW Ishtelungs or whatever, uh, those are actually color separated into gray, which is very nice. It is stickers again for the eyes, blue stickers up for the head camera around front as well as here around back. Speaking of the stickers, this is it. This is the sheet with everything attached onto it. So I used pretty much every single one of them that would fall onto the mobile suit. These ones right here are for on the weapon. I'll talk about those when we get to it, the beam rifle. But yeah, mainly it was the eyes, head cameras, and these white ones right here, which actually fall on what to me is a fairly reasonably forgivable spot because they're just inside the shield right here and they're on a recessed part so you wouldn't really even notice that if i didn't mention that was a sticker you probably wouldn't tell and a lot of the time they'll just be away like that so that's it nothing on the backpack either here's the backpack looking good it's a little bit simpler than we saw in the rising freedom but it's very very nice and solid this bit's a bit funny though it's uh very simple 
But yeah, when it does come to any kind of special parts, pearlescent, metallic, those sort of things, there's nothing on here. The eyes inside the head are in a nice shade of clear plastic, but you don't see those unless you're going to actually paint around them and integrate that into your build. Speaking of which, I did panel line this, so all those lines you see there, I did panel line those, so they will not pop that much straight out of box, and I always recommend doing that. I did cut off the safety knobs or the safety flags up on the VFIN 2 to make it nice and sharp. And when it does come to the kind of like bad aspects of a model kit, like I mentioned, when you're nipping this out, this plastic does mark a lot. Now these two shoulders, I treat it differently. This one is right out of box, so you can see the rough cut. This one I cleaned up a little bit more, but under this light right here, you're kind of seeing it. This one I cleaned. Wait, no, I didn't do the whole shoulder. I just did this top bit, for example, right there. So as you can see, the top bit I cleaned up, the bottom bit I did not. What I did was I just kind of went through the grits, that is 600, 8, 1200, and then I buffed out the scratches. But yeah, this does get a little bit rough in places when you're cutting it out. But now that I'm actually trying to take a look around it, I'm not really finding anything too obvious. So, you know, it's not the worst, but this pink-ish plastic does mark up a little bit during the build. Now, it seems these aren't too much of an issue. They're actually on a little bit what you could almost call a natural line in the armor. So the upper thigh one there, you can see it there and the associated nub. So they, I don't know, maybe it's just the color of plastic that does crotch again, but I find the mold lines and seam lines are pretty much next to non-existent on this kit. Last up now, aesthetically jumping into some size comparisons and first up there it is side by side with the Oryx MT-82, so it's a tall enough Gundam, so that makes me wonder. What size is it side by side with the Rising Freedom? I'm gonna have to put it in a little bit sideways here because of those big old wings. And yeah, it does seem to be a little bit, a little bit taller. Next up, a Witch from Mercury High Grade, there's the High Grade Calabarn. And a couple of random High Grades off the shelf, there's the High Grade Barbatos, High Grade Gundam Exia, High Grade G-Self, the High Grade Psycho Doga, and the High Grade Infinite Justice in a fantastic pose. Actually, let's get into a more in-depth comparison there. So anyway, there are both of those side by side. That, of course, is the Immortal Justice right here on the left and the Infinite Justice there on the right in pink. So I'm going to do what I did before. We're going to have a couple of close-ups of both of these so we can talk about, well, a couple of things. Not going to be a full comparison. So we're going to have the Immortal on the left, the Infinite on the right. And there's, I don't even know how to say about this. I guess, in a way, you can make your own decision by looking at them. I'll try and give you as much visual information as possible so you can check them both out. The Infinite, of course, is a much older kit. And it may not look it through the video, but it's very obvious in person right here. You can see a lot more nub marks, a lot more seams. And that's just what it's spinning here on front of me. You can see a big seam line up the side of the head. And the plastic is very shiny, shows some of that plastic folding through it. And all of these things you definitely don't see in the newer Immortal Justice. Also in the hand, I'm not sure if this was the case at first, but the Infinite is feeling a little bit floppy. I'm not sure if this is over time or what, but what we have with the Immortal is rock solid. Overall, the mold, the general shape, the silhouette is a lot fancier looking on the Immortal in person, but I can see down the camera, the Infinite with its crazy pink kind of looks a little better. So taking another bit of a look at it from a couple of different angles, again, just for your own judgment on which one that you want. The older one, the newer one, I'm going to throw the Rising Freedom in there as well, just for a little bit of a benchmark. There is like the body on them all. There's definitely a lot more detail packed into the Infinite Justice than we're seeing here in the Immortal Justice. But just like I mentioned, there's just something that automatically looks a little bit more regal, a little bit more powerful and a little bit more well designed in the plastic model in the hand than you actually see with the Infinite Justice, but the Infinite Justice has those ridiculously over-the-top colors and that old-school Killer Seed Destiny look. Now, it's zoomed on in a little bit towards the face, and I have to admit, there's just something, to me, a little bit lacking about the face on the Immortal Justice. And the reason I say that is not really from, like, a kind of subjective kind of opinion. It's the fact it's so hard to get on camera and get lit nicely. It's very kind of funny. Maybe it's the eye angle, maybe it's just the general shape of the head, maybe it's the two-tone color, but Compared to the other ones, and I suppose a lot of those things I just said would apply to the Infinite Justice as well, but that looks fantastic. So there's just something, maybe design-wise in the kit, that just isn't as killer looking as the other two. But then again, it's right there for you to see, to make your own decision. So now jumping into the accessories, and in here with the Immortal Justice Gundam is the usual sword, board, and beam rifle loadout with a little bit of a change. When it comes to the beam rifle, we've got the beam rifle. The swords in here aren't your standard beam sabers, these are a kind of really cool wide beam type. The shield is a big old shield, very similar to what we saw with the 
Rising Freedom. And besides that, then we have some beam effects as well as an adapter for using with the transformed mobile armor mode. Now, once again, this is very similar to what we saw with the Rising Freedom, but there's not as much, especially missing one particular thing. And that one thing is an alternate hand, which is such a disappointment. So yeah, when it does come to the actual hands in here, all we have is the standard holding hands. This is a little bit of a letdown, so it means you're not going to be getting some cool poses with widespread hands, but it is worth wondering one thing. So the Immortal Justice right here and the Rising Freedom are extremely, extremely similar kits with a lot of interchangeable parts. For example, if you could just pull off the arm just like so, as you can see, it's ball joints once again. So not the standard Gompla shoulder joint. So it's great for articulation, but it does mean parts aren't interchangeable between all Gompla, but they are between these particular kits. So that makes me wonder. Is the widespread open hand that we got with the Rising Freedom Gundam compatible with this kit? And I mean, is it fully compatible? And by fully compatible, I mean, can we just whip off the rear armor like so, pop it on, and attach on the Immortal's hand back like this? And yes, we can. And that's a bit of a disappointment. So that means they had the data for this. They could have thrown it on the runner, but they didn't. That is definite negative points. So at least you can use this one if you do have one spare. Would have been much nicer to have one though. And speaking about compatibility, if you whip off the backpack right here, you'll see we've got the standard two peg high grade adapter, meaning that this will be compatible and the backpack will be compatible with most high grade kits that are out there. So just a bit of a simple test here is to grab the Rising Freedom once again, pop off its backpack, pop it onto the Immortal, take the Immortal's backpack, pop it onto the Rising, and there you go. So this means there is no modification necessary if you want to make some kind of kit bash or a custom, which is always incredibly, incredibly nice to be able to change them around a bit. These kits, 100% compatible with each other. However, if we are talking about this guy right here, the Infinite Justice, this has a backpack that's completely different on two different pivoting big pegs that is not compatible with this. So if you're hoping they would work together, well, they cannot. So now moving on to what actually comes inside of the box with the Immort- What? 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 What's good? Do it. Fashion So anyway, moving on to what actually comes inside of the box, and first off, we've got these right here. So these right here are the Visual Noggle Beam Boomerangs. So there is no actual information in the manual about these, so I assume they're just like any old beam boomerang and they can be thrown and or held in the hand. So attaching these into the hands is the usual way, you just pop it in the sandwich style. Of course, this is the ham, the hand parts are the bread, and you just sandwich it in. So this works perfect, these hold on very nicely. I tried reverse grip as well to see if I can hold it reverse grip, and yes it can, looking absolutely awesome and over the top in that seed kind of way. And that right there is what it looks like in a pose. This is a nice kit to pose, these weapons are great, definitely a nice change from the standard beam saber, and very, very justice styled. So these right here are very nice weapons. At first I thought this kind of way they attach via just those two tiny little bits there. I thought it wouldn't hold on, but the whole thing kind of works out really well. Unless you start trying to move it around by the blade, even then it's not too bad. Move it by the handle, but overall, nice weapons and they look cool. When these are not in use, they store in the usual kind of beam saber way, but a little bit different. You pop off the beam just like so, then you're able to actually close down this little handle section by pulling it off, attaching it up a little bit further, hiding one of those little attachment indents and then you can just pop it onto the side skirting armor just like so for storage. Now I will mention that this does add a little bit more leverage to already kind of easy to knock off side skirts so if you pull them up from the bottom like that they will pop off extremely extremely easily. So next up here is the high energy beam rifle and you might be like well we've seen this somewhere before and yeah right here because these are exactly 100% identical. 
This one up top I've pan lined, this one right here I have not. So that's how the only way I know the difference. This one is from the Freedom, this one is from the Justice, but they're exactly the same. The only difference between the two of them are the stickers included for the colors, so maybe that's why Bandai didn't bother color separating them. Cheaping out a little bit. Getting this into the hand is the usual routine, once again sandwich that in, bread and ham. The ball joint attachment is quite good, but I will mention the actual ball joint into the wrist is actually tighter than the wrist into the forearm, so most of the time you're going to be pulling off the wrist as well. And when it's attached in, it holds on absolutely perfectly. It looks great, and even though it's not fully color separated, it's still a very impressive looking beam rifle without a single doubt, and looks awesome when in a pose. When not in use, you can just pop this out just like so, and as usual, you're able to attach this around back using this little peg right here. The peg is there, it attaches in like so, and this kind of does get in the way and clash a little bit with some of the stuff around back. Not awfully, but it does a bit, including the thrusters on the backpack, but that right there is what it looks like attached on. Next up in here, we've got the Flash Edge Shield Boomerang. Once again, it is a, well, it's a shield, but it also can become a boomerang, so let's check it out shield style first. So a similar but not the same style adapter that we saw on the Freedom. No beam shields this time on the Justice, just that little slot for the shield. Attaching it on is super simple, just pop it into the slot just like so. This is quite big, but not too big. It's easy enough to get into the positions you want it into. It doesn't get in the way of the articulation per se. It doesn't really interfere with the shoulder. It kind of works out very, very nicely. And this is satisfyingly thick. I mean, like, it isn't just a thin shield or just a couple of parts. There is a whole lot going on here. We don't have the sliding gimmick or the red pieces we saw in the Freedom, but it is quite similar. So when it comes to this shield, it's extremely similar to what we saw with the Rising Freedom, but a little bit different. First off, we've got some flick out wings. This is a little awkward. They're really hard to actually get into. Uh, I just use the beams off of the beam boomerangs to pick it out, and this is what they look like out. I'll also mention that this end right here is not color accurate. It is meant to be gray, like it shows right here in the manual. And weirdly enough, talking about right here in the manual, when you're actually displaying this flying off as if it's being thrown, like a boomerang shield would be thrown, unlike using a kind of grabby grabby action base like it's said to with the Rising Freedom, this one tells you to actually use the adapter in the box that you use for the transformation. So you just attach it on underneath like so, and this actually, and it attaches onto a regular action base, and this definitely looks a little bit better. If you hide it from some angles like what you're seeing right here, it looks great. You will notice it underneath, it is quite a big little adapter for something so simple, but overall it does work out. But this does really highlight the fact that this kit does not have a widespread hand to make it look like it's throwing the actual beam boomerangs. That also is a little bit of a letdown, but overall, overall, it is incredibly, incredibly nice. Beam pops into the end just like this. The last of the stuff that we've gotten here are these two little beam effects known as the Kalkitra Heavy Beam Cutting Leg. And they're pretty much like you'd expect from the... Justice Gundam. These are beam effects that attach into the shins. They attach from the lower knee down into the foot, attaching them is simple enough as long as you have them the right way around. We've got one for both legs and these do look pretty killer when attached, especially when you get this kit into an awesome kicking pose like this one right here that I ripped off right from the manual. Looking absolutely awesome and beam kicks, yes. The only thing that would make them cooler is if they actually extended out the bottom of the feet as well. Okay, so next up here is the articulation. This thing is rock solid when it comes to the joints and all of that stuff, but I have found a couple of things have knocked off during the actual review. That being the gun dick right here, meaning again, it's just the case of Archimedes knocking it off. And over here, we've got these guys. These pop off, like I mentioned earlier on, and the wrist can pull off sometimes if you move them around a lot like so. Now, these aren't critically loose. It's more so a case of it happens when you're moving things around a lot. Otherwise, the actual kit is rock solid. Plastic on plastic, no polycap build. So when it comes to the articulation on this, it is fantastic again. Very similar to what we saw with the Rising Freedom, the shoulders, the hips, the drop down mechanism in the hips. All of that is very similar. However, I find the ankles are a little bit more limited to the, well, forward and back movement, meaning I can't get it as low into this launch. The arms are great, you can move them around wherever you want, and overall it does look fantastic. And those angles and everything just match so well with dynamic poses in that perfect seed kind of way. One of my favorite aspects about this is the elbows, because the actual elbow armor is attached onto the joint, which means it doesn't move with either the forearm or the upper arm when you bend it, so it does look like it is a shifting mechanism when it isn't actually. Very nice. So I'm not going to go through everything on this because it is so similar to the Rising Freedom. We do have that simple but super effective sliding mechanism in the hips. But my favorite aspect about this particular mobile suit and what really sets it apart from the Rising Freedom is the arms. These are extremely, extremely curvy in the best possible way. If you actually move them in like so, you've got these 
or should I say this little bit of extra right here, which gives a little bit more curvature. So when you do pose this, it looks fantastic. Also, like I mentioned with the elbow, when you do bend it, that armor bit is on the elbow, so it does stay armored when it's bent instead of moving off with the forearm. Overall, extremely impressive. Transformation time. But hold up, I totally forgot about the wings right here. So these are very different from the Freedom. We've got these little thrusters here that just rotate on their axis. The wings can move in and out just like so. We also have two points of rotation attaching on the wings, so you can change the angle that's part of the transformation. There is a flapping action to them too, so you can angle them nicely. This thruster right here, this thruster right here can move this independently as well. And then we do have this little hood section that pops up over. That is one of the cheapest looking things I've ever seen. That is not cool. Finally, onto the transformation to mobile armor mode. And what it says in the instructions about this is, due to the nature of Compass's activities, there's frequent travel between Earth and space, so the unit possesses a convertible mechanism. It can breach the atmosphere without the shield, which is pretty much exactly what it said with the rising freedom. And this is a very similar transformation. The biggest difference is you're not able to actually just seamlessly do it. You actually have to remove this little segment off the back of this hood section before pulling it up because of that big old unicorn horn, then slap it back on just like so. Next, you realign the wings to get them into the right position, bring them back just like so, just to get them a little bit out of the way. There are some beam rifle segments here that you can pull out and extend just like so, and then extend the wings out for this overall look, realigning the engine sections. Finally, once again, just like the Rising Freedom, you need to grab the shield, stick the beam rifle into it like so, and then that pops onto the base adapter. Once again, this doesn't attach onto the unit itself, it attaches onto the base adapter. Anyway, that right there is what we get in the end, and again, very similar to the Rising Freedom, but I feel a little not as nice looking. The nose section up front is very, very, very basic looking. It doesn't look very nice at all. And overall, this 100% just looks like a Gundam on its front. But yeah, like it said in the instructions, this is just to get through the atmosphere. So if that is the case, well, I don't know if that could with all that crap hanging off the bottom, the rifle and whatnot, but I, I'm not an engineer. Make your own judgment. Anyway, that right there is it for the review, and this is a really good kit, but I do feel it's not quite as good as the Rising Freedom, even though it does have less stickers in its build, which is a little bit on the wild side. So going through the list a bit, aesthetically, this is phenomenal looking. It looks so, so good. It's got a great looking head. The overall design is great, and this is just such a kick-ass looking Gundam. It's got great curves, the arms look fantastic, and so do the legs. Overall, this is incredibly unique and an absolutely gorgeous Gundam model kit. Thankfully, there aren't many stickers, which is great. When it comes to the accessories in here, they're very, very nice. It is a bit weird that we're kind of shafted for a widespread hand in this particular kit, but everything else is pretty good. The beam rifle does need stickers. The shield isn't 100% color accurate, but does look great. Attaching it onto the base adapter is definitely better than one of those holdy stands. And the beam effects in here do look really nice. I especially like those beam boomerangs. Those are stylish. When it comes to the articulation, this is fantastic, but there are a couple of droppy parts on this compared to the Freedom. I find the little crotch point, the wrists, and the side skirts like to pop off every now and then, but they're not loose. It's just if you move them a lot, you can pop them off. Finally, then there's the transformation. It's pretty much the same as the Rising Freedom. It doesn't look particularly exciting or very cool. Again, that is a subjective opinion. You may like the way it looks, but the nose section is definitely one of the cheapest looking things I've seen on a kit in a long, long time. However, overall, this kit still does so well. It's almost 100% color accurate, and it does what this thing does in the movie. I assume I haven't seen it. However, when I do add up all the elements together, this is still a fantastic Gunpla without a single doubt, another platinum tier Gundam Seed Freedom release, and I highly, highly recommend it. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. I got mine through Hobby Link Japan, link in the description, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys, so thank you so, so much for watching, and as usual, special thanks to those of you who helped me out over on the channel memberships right here and on Patreon, including Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Orgy59061, Ten Soldier YT, and Van Fawn.